morning. So uh, today we're going to go into the nitty gritty of uh, nested ANOVA and um, I want to use a kind of a fun example um, where we are actually studying uh, the effect of um, inheritance on the uh, inheritance of, of spots in uh, cows. <laughs> So our y value is the number of spots, number on a cow, and we're going to investigate um, <clears throat> the influence of the mother and the father on that, and we're going to use, you know, uh, obviously a very simple, oversimplified data set, like I am want to do. Okay, so what is this design? Um, so first of all, we have uh, female cows. We have, and these are called dams in the animal breeding literature. Um, and we have two dams. Uh, we have Bossy and we have Jersey. I love cow names. Um, and then, and so we have, in terms of dams, we have two groups here. We're going to have offspring that are produced by Bossy and by Jersey. And we're going to mate Bossy and Jersey with sires. Um, so this is the male part of this. And obviously these would be separate matings uh, at the same time. Uh, we're going to mate uh, Bossy with uh, a sire named Fireball. And uh, with a, a bull named Snorter. <laughs> and we're going to have Jersey uh, later on mated with Timothy. The farm I used to work on actually had a bull named Timothy uh, and um, another one named Bighorn. Okay, so there are four sires um, and we have uh, these, these we would call subgroups. And um, so, so we have A equals two groups and we have B equals two sires per subgroup. Uh, two, uh, two sires per group, sorry. So the, the replication within one dam is two, and the replication within uh, one another dam is two. Okay, so we have a total of four sires. And you can see here, this is not a cross design, right? Because Fireball was not mated with Jersey, and Snorter was not mated with Jersey, and Timothy was not mated with, it could be set up that way, but um, these are two separate crosses that we've done, and of course, uh, the result of those crosses is going to be progeny. And we can give these guys fun names too. Um, Oreo is a progeny of Bossy Cross Fireball, and Fiji. You might be wondering where I got these names. I think I just looked up a, uh, a list of favorite cow names. <laughs> uh, Burger <laughs> and Red. Uh, the offspring of Timothy was Patty. Uh, sorry, Timothy and Jersey. Obviously, the offspring are coming from Jersey, but sired by Timothy. And uh, Daisy. And then the offspring of Jersey and Bighorn were Bessie and Dora. I wonder if cow names go in and out of fashion, kind of like people names. I don't know. All right, so again, at the bottom level here, we have n equals 2. So this is our replication within each level here. So we have, obviously, a nested design. We have each sire is unique to each dam not vice versa, so sire is nested within dam, progeny is nested within sire, but that's just the error term, right? We have two replicates within uh, each sire. Um, okay, so we're going to measure the number of spots. So our y variable is the number of spots, and who are we measuring that? We're measuring that on the progeny, okay? We're gonna make inferences then about the control of spot number by sire and by dam, because 
we can partition the variation among those. So uh, I'm going to give you sample y numbers that we might get out of this. Um, so it, it would be 2, uh, 4. Of course, I'm keeping a beautifully simple data set with absolutely no error in these numbers at all because uh, we're just counting discrete numbers of spots on their hide. And notice that it is variable. And it's generally increasing as we go from Bossy to Jersey and Fireball to Snorter to Timothy to Binghorn. Um, but, you know, it might not be that way. I'm just making up numbers here. Now, um, those are the actual Y variables that we measure, and but we can also get means, right? So we can get subgroup means. So for Fireball, we see that the mean is 3. Uh, for Snorter, we can see that the mean of Snorter's progeny is 5. And for Timothy, the mean of Timothy's progeny are 10. And the mean of uh, Bighorn's progeny is 14. Okay? Likewise, uh, we have uh, group means that we can calculate. And so group means very nicely come out to beautiful numbers. Um, four for Bossy and 12 uh, for Jersey. Okay, and our question is, so, you know, is there, is there a difference between Bossy and Jersey in the, the number of spots? Is there, so this would be a genetic difference, presumably, um, between Bossy and Jersey, or whatever influences the number of cow, the number of spots. Um, we're trying to partition that variation. By the way, in genetics, we're quite often interested in the sire-to-sire -sire variation because Presumably that doesn't have any maternal effects because the sire has not actually got the baby inside it and it's not it's not influencing it the way a mother does. And so the sire-to-sire -sire variation is often of great importance in genetics um, as a measure of the additive genetic variation uh, contributing to spot number. Um, so we would look at that additive genetic variation as a measure of the genetic basis of spot number. Okay, so what do we do with these numbers now? Well, we can hierarchically calculate variances. So the first one we're going to calculate is the sums of squares uh, among groups. So how do we do that? So remember what the groups are. It's Bossy progeny versus Jersey progeny, right? So the sums of squares uh, is going to be given by the formula n times b times the summation of, now we're getting to something that looks like what we're familiar with, uh, the mean for the group minus the grand mean um, quantity squared. So this is the sum of the squared deviations of the um, group mean from the grand mean. And by the way, we didn't calculate the grand mean, did we? The grand mean, y double bar, is going to be the mean of 4 and 12. So that's 4 plus 12 is 16 divided by 2 is 8. All right. So we can see that our n is 2, our b is 2, and we're going to get the sum of the squared deviations 4 minus 8 quantity squared. Where did that come from? Okay, here's the y bar a, right? This is a, our group for bossy. That mean is 4 minus the grand mean plus 12 minus 8 quantity squared. And if we multiply that all out, we will get 128. And by the way, the mean square for the group is going to also be 128 because the degrees of freedom is 1, because n equals 2, right? Our a equals 2. All right, so 2 uh, sums of squares among subgroups. We're partitioning our variation now. Among subgroups is going to be n times the sum of the squared deviations. Um, 
in fact, we could put a double summation size if we, if we want here over all groups A and B of YB minus Y bar A quantity squared. So this is going to be four groups within this. So we're going to have two times, we have four deviations. It's going to be three minus, uh, or sorry, uh, two minus three plus four minus three. 4 minus 5 times 6 minus 5, etc. Okay, so um, 2, let me make sure I get this right. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the deviation of the subgroup means from the group means. So YB, so these are the YBs right here, and these are the Y bar A's at this level. So that's what I need to look at. So I have um, 3 minus 4, quantity squared, there's 4 there, plus 5 minus 4, quantity squared, plus 10 minus 12, quantity squared, plus uh, 14 minus 12, quantity squared, uh, and we multiply that all out, and we get, okay, it's going to be 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 4 plus 4, so 1 plus 1 plus 4 plus 4 is 10 times 2 is going to be 20. Use your calculator. Don't do it in your head like I just did. All right, and then the final sums of squares we need to calculate is the within group sums of squares, which is going to be the summation, the triple summation, across all groups A, subgroups B, and N of Y, and you could put subscripts on it if you want, A, B, N, minus Y bar B, the subgroup. So these are the deviations from the subgroup means of the observation. So, 2 minus 3, 4 minus 3, 4 minus 5, 6 minus 5, 9 minus 10, 11. And I could write all these out, but I think you can see. I, I'm just going to do the first one so that you can see. So it's 2 minus 3, quantity squared. Maybe I'll do the second one too. Plus 4 minus 3, quantity squared, etc. Dot, dot, dot. That's going to equal... And by the way, look, they're all deviating by 1, so this is a very nice number. It comes out to be 8. Um, oh, um, by the way, I, well, so I gave you the sums of squares here. I didn't give you the mean square, um, but I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so this is the sums of squares here, the sums of squares here, and we're getting the sums of squares here, which is 8. Okay? So let me summarize this because I realized, so you might want to pause this for a moment, copy that down, get up where those sums of squares are coming from. So I want to kind of summarize here. Okay. All right. So we had one sums of squares among groups equals 128. Our degrees of freedom, I just want to talk about that for a second, equals A minus 1, the number of groups minus 1, or 2 minus 1 in this particular case, or 1. So the mean square is 128 among the groups. 2, the sums of squares among subgroups. So those are the sires, is um, 20. But let me talk about the degrees of freedom here. So the degrees of freedom for subgroups is A times B minus 1. Okay, so we had 2 times 2 minus 1, or 2. Okay, so we have two degrees of freedom, which means the mean squares for the subgroups is 10, right? 25 by 2. Then we have the sums of squares for the within groups, variation, okay, and that turned out to be 8, but what about the degrees of freedom? The degrees of freedom are A times B times N minus 1, so 2 times 2 
times 2 minus 1, or 4 times 1, 4. All right, so what's the mean square within? Mean square within is 2. All right, now, this is going to allow us to actually calculate a nice uh, ANOVA table. So again, you may want to pause, copy down those numbers if you aren't keeping up. But our ANOVA table uh, looks like this. So we have source of variation, uh, just like our typical ANOVA table, sums of squares, mean square, F value, um, and probability of a greater F, i.e. the P value. Okay, we have our source. There we go. All right, so let's explicitly put down what our group was. It was dam, and we had one degree of freedom. 128 was our sums of squares, and 128 was our mean square. Um, sire, I'm going to wait to, to do the F. The sire, the degrees of freedom was 2. We saw we had a sums of squares of 20, therefore the mean square is 10. And then the error term, by the way, let's explicitly put sire nested within dam, okay? And then we're going to have the error term with degrees of freedom of 4. Sums of squares was 8. The mean square was 2. All right. Now, because sire is randomly chosen within dam, it actually is going to serve as our error term for the dam effect. And so our F for dam is actually 12.8. All right. And likewise, within Sire, we had progeny serving as the error term. By the way, this is progeny to progeny variation, right? Within groups. Um, so we have uh, a ratio of 5.0, an F ratio, 10 divided by 2. Okay, And we would have to look these up. In SAS jump. I haven't done that, um, but perhaps we'll do this uh, in class as a practice. Okay, so um, importantly, uh, these are this um, is a very simple analysis of variance that has now shown us um, whether uh, dam is statistically significant, whether there is variation from dam to dam, and whether there is sire to sire variation in terms of spot number, okay? And the implication of dam to dam variation and sire to sire variation is that, you know, there is perhaps some genetic and perhaps some maternal component to control of spot number in, um, in cows, okay? And, but we would need to know whether <coughs> these F values are sufficiently elevated such that they wouldn't be achieved by chance. And that, of course, will be given by our p-value, just like with every other ANOVA. All right, so um, that is our nested analysis of variance. This is, by the way, it's the traditional approach to nested ANOVA. We're going to see that JUMP gives us an option to do kind of a non-traditional approach. In fact, it is the default now, I believe, with SAS JUMP um, to do the, the non-traditional or the, the new way of doing it. Um, and it's using a method called restricted maximum likelihood, REML approach, um, which is a little bit different, but the philosophy is basically the same. Just different calculations underlying it. Very good, so you've now done your first uh, nested ANOVA.